Hi, I'm Joey. I'm Mason. And this is a kid. And a car salesman. Today we are here at Porsche Irvine reviewing the 2020 992 Porsche 911 Carrera S Cabriolet. The 992 generation 911 was first introduced in 2020. So this car is fitted in aventurine green, which is a really, really rare Porsche 911 color over a full club truffle brown leather interior. Now the 992 is the current latest and greatest generation of the 911. In addition, it is also the largest 911, but of course it's also the fastest. And what's unique about the 992 is see this introduction of a full shift from that kind of analog raw driving experience to the introduction of the digital world and really getting this car to be technologically advanced. And this car is fitted with a 3.0 liter flat six, which is classic Porsche. It's turbocharged, it has about 443 horsepower, and this particular variant is a rear wheel drive car. So one of the most striking features with the 992 is the headlights in particular. They've shifted from that traditional Porsche silver color, but it's more black and there's all these fine little details. But what's very cool about it is the actual size of it and this little divot it has and it's really striking and it makes you when you look at a 992 it makes you focus on the headlight and the more you look at it the cooler it gets when it comes to the front end as you can see it's very wide and you have this much more squared off line here from the hood the intake on the bottom is bigger it's all actually functional as well it's not just for pure aesthetics here on the, on the corner it's actually squared off that comes all the way back from 993 as well as 964 so porsche has been doing this for a very long time and porsche always likes to tie in some of its history to its current generation 911s which i find very cool and on this particular car we have something that's called the rs spider wheels which has been a very very popular wheel for us here at porsche with the satin platinum finish, which gives it more of a, a little bit more of an aggressive look as they have a little bit of a darker tinge to them. And what I like particularly about these wheels is it's not just a typical silver or black. It has almost a little bit of a brown reflection to it, and it kind of sparkles despite its matte finish, which looks really cool, and especially with the contrast of the red brake caliper, really gives that sporty, menacing look. And for those of you that all love Porsche out there, the red brake caliper means that it's a, either a 4S or a Carrera S. And something else that I also like about this is it also has the Porsche colored crest, which really makes it pop, as he was saying, off of the brake caliper. Another striking feature of the 992 is these brand new mirrors. You can see there's a lot of weird aerodynamic details. And in addition, there's all sorts of sensors and the shape of it, it's a lot bigger and more noticeable. Some people like it, some people don't. Personally, I kind of like it. Usually mirrors on cars, most manufacturers today don't really focus on them. Mm -hmm. I think putting all these weird little design details into them is something that looks really nice. I really like what they've done for the 992 generation opposed to the previous generations. It makes it look a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more sporty as that's what Porsche is always working towards is making their cars the best they can be. So something that's brand new with the 992 is we have this door handle which actually pops out as soon as you approach the door and you can lock it via the comfort access on the side of the door handle. So on the previous generations, we just had a handle that was sticking out. This makes the car a lot more aerodynamically sound and helps just for ease of comfort being able to open up the car. And having it flush with the door line, I have to say, it's really cool to look at. So it's very, very cool about the 992 generation is Porsche has changed the back of this car for the grill slats. And for those of you, this is a really cool piece of trivia. If you count these slats, there's actually nine of them and there's nine of them on the other side of this rear brake light, which makes it nine, nine, two, which is really cool. Or you can go nine, 11, which I find a very cool piece of trivia for the, for the latest generation of the 911. And the most striking thing about the 992 is especially the rear end. It is much wider than the 991. And keep in mind, this is a Carrera S. This isn't even a turbo and it's really wide. But the big difference you notice as well, the, the new slats here, but this whole theme of all these like weird gaps, which I think really tie the car lines wise nice together. It's no longer the super smooth, silky design. 
And you can see with the tail light, it's actually a separate piece from the turn signal to the brake light, which wraps all the way around. Mm -hmm. The look of the floating Porsche letters. And then of course you have the four exhaust pipes, because this is a Carrera S with the sport exhaust package. Uh, in terms of this rear light, this is the way that Porsche is going for all of their models. At night, it looks really aggressive. You can almost see the light as you're driving down the freeway. It looks like a lightsaber, which I find is really, really cool. Hey, Joey, what are you doing in the driver's seat? So on this car, as you can see, it's a cabriolet, which means convertible here at Porsche. And it takes only about 10 to 12 seconds for the, for the car to do its entire top operation, either up or down. You can also do it up to about 20 miles an hour, which is really cool. So you don't have to stop all the way. You can also have the top go as you're cruising down the street, which I think almost gives it a transformer kind of. So on all the convertible 911s, we have these little, almost looks like a door of some kind. This is what we call the rollover protection. So if the car flips over and you're driving it too aggressively, then as maybe you should have, these pop up so you don't smash your head and die. So on the interior of this 992, we have this really unique truffle brown club leather, which is this full leather interior, which I don't see very often on this aventurine green exterior. And it has something that's really, really cool. And that is the chalk seat belts, which we definitely don't see on this truffle brown interior. Now, one of the unique parts about this car, especially with the 992, is the completely revamped interior. Normally with Porsche 911s, they all, people say, they all look the same or they're all similar. When it comes to the 992's interior, it's completely different. So in terms of the overall technology, Porsche has been a little bit behind on a lot of its tech, but with the 992, we have really, really upgraded it. Now we have this 12.9 inch screen and everything with the exception of the tachometer is digital, which I find as a really, really cool addition to this 992 generation. On the center console of this 992 generation, it has changed a lot. So like before we had all these physical touch buttons, now it's just this really nice black piano panel with really no touch buttons with the exception of the heated seats and the cooled seats that this particular car has. Which is a very nice change as the 991, especially like on the fully loaded GT3s, you just had an array of buttons and grrr forever. And if you wanted to find anything, it was impossible. Now it's a digital display, the buttons are more space, but what's actually nice is with less buttons, the function is more important. So for example, up towards the dashboard, you have your more important things you would need. For example, your four-way flashers to raise the ride height of the car for better ground clearance or to adjust your suspension or shut off your traction control to do donuts. If that's what you're into. <laughs> a lot of people, when they're talking about the 992 generation, they talk about the shifter. A lot of people call it a shaver, but I am starting to grow to like it now since we've had this for about two years. Uh, as well as the P button and the M button, which is just so you can go full-time paddles. In previous generations, we had where you could go down into drive and over to the left to be able to shift. Now, if you want to do manual shifting, it's only via the paddle shifters. Another change as well is the steering wheel. Uh, Porsche likes to keep their steering wheel simple with not too many buttons, which I think is a good thing. But what's nice is kind of the exposure of metal, the bolts on the wheel, the paddle shifters, and then you now have a Manatino dial, kind of like a Ferrari, for adjusting the drive mode, which again, another cool little detail rather than hitting a sport button, it's an actual switch on the wheel so you can feel like a budget Formula One driver. Yes, <laughs> I like that. And they've changed the cup holders a lot here for the 992 generation as well. So now we have one here in the center console right below all of the main control buttons as well as over on the passenger side. And as me and Joey were talking about a, a moment ago, they always like to over-engineer their cup holders. Most cars just have it where you put it in. This one you actually have to press and it opens and pops out. With the Sport Chrono package, you have this beautiful clock on the dashboard, which Porsche has been doing for a while, but it's something that just every time you see it, it's so nice. Another interesting detail as well is the door handles. They're not actually on the door. They're like much higher up. 
and it blends in with the trim nicely, you simply lift it, it clicks, and it opens. As we were talking about the hood earlier, how it comes from 964, 993 generation, very, very similar thing here comes with the center vents. It brings us back to the 964 generation as well. Again, Porsche tying in their history with the 992 like they always do very, very well. Now, one important test we will do with the 911 because it has four seats, let's see if a small person like me can actually fit. Now, historically, I've not been able to fit in a 911 seat in the rear. Let's see. So to sit in the rear seat of a 911, it's actually pretty simple. There's a little tab on the back of the seat you pull, it unlocks it for you. And again, you can see with this one, beautiful wood trim along the back of the seat. Most will just be the traditional leather. We just kind of wiggle our way in. Uh, if you don't have the convertible top up, I would think it's rather impossible to sit down. Then we sit back here, gonna close this. Uh, that's where I'm gonna lose my legs. Oh boy. Yeah, it, uh, it works, at least because this is a convertible, I do have headroom, although if we were in a rollover, it might not be the best. Um, but for a parade, I think it's the perfect car. All right, so now you join us at the parking lot of Porsche Irvine as we are taking for a drive. Okay, so with this car having the uh, sports chrono package, we have a bunch of different drive modes. Right now we're in the, the uh, normal mode which makes for a pretty chill, kind of just cruising around town, convertible top down. It makes it a perfect driver car here in sunny Southern California as it is today. One thing I do like about this car is the seats are very comfortable. I think with previous 911s, they just haven't been. Uh, I think that's been a weakness of Porsche in the past, but they've really re-engineered these well. They have good bolsters, which we'll see all the support is. But honestly, the comfort, like they're firm seats, but they're mm -hmm. very supportive. So it doesn't feel like you're sitting on a rock. It like, it's a nice kind of firm massage and it's not massaging it just it feels great yes uh, I would say that these seats are probably something that are underused a lot of times in these cars we get what's called a 14-way seat this car has 18-way seats so you have a lot more adjustability and just as Joey was saying they're very very comfortable as we're just kind of cruising around town you can adjust the lumbar support the side bolsters the back bolsters so it makes it for a nice cruiser now I'll go ahead and switch it into sport mode it's gonna have the car shift a lot later in the rev range. Um, so it's gonna hold each gear a little bit longer. Speaking about the gears, so this car has uh, an eight speed PDK. In previous generations, we had a seven speed PDK. So they upped it in terms of how many gears the transmission has. And uh, I must say, I like it. Yeah, what's great about the eight speed is the gears are closer together and the downshifts are smooth. They're really quick and the car always knows what gear to be in. And there's also, surprisingly for a sports car, low-end torque, which for driving and commuting is awesome. And even if you like, you wanna pass someone, you don't have to put your foot all the way down and go down a couple gears. You know, you'll just have the power available to you, which is a really nice thing to have. Now, I'm gonna show you guys my favorite feature, and that's something called launch control. Always a good one in a Porsche. So, you have to put the car in Sport Plus, and here we go. Woohoo! Oh, that is awesome! The one great thing with these turbocharged 911s, a lot of torque. I mean, my God, that is impressive. <laughs> it's just amazing. That's by far my favorite feature. <laughs> now, the one thing with this car where it does get a little bit of flack is the exhaust note because it is turbocharged. Because turbos are spinning air, they do kind of muffle the exhaust. But honestly, because this is a regular Carrera, which is more for a car you're gonna use on the road, it's not obnoxiously loud, but loud enough where you still enjoy the sound. So I think it's a nice combo. You know, if you're taking this on track or you wanna show it off, maybe it's not the best for you. But from a pure driving experience point of view, it's fantastic. And you can feel right about there, which is about, what would we say, 50% throttle? Yeah, for sure. Plenty of power, plenty of low end torque. You know, the engine there only went to 4,000 and we got moving pretty good. So it's a really good engine and uh, gear ratio pairing for street driving, which is again, what this car is designed for. Most definitely. And in terms of the braking with Porsche, of course it's a high performance car, so has amazing brakes, which I'm sure that Joey may be testing that out here in a moment. One of the things I do like is suspension. It's firm, there's no body roll, but it's not like, you know, you're being rattled to death, like that. It's, it's just really nice. Brake performance, fantastic. I mean, my gosh, that is just, <laughs> that's great. 
Well, so what do you say that you go behind the wheel? Oh, I'd like to try that out. Let's do it. Let's do it. Round two. Round two. Now to put this car into gear, again, very simple. You'd use the shaver shifter, pull it back into drive, and then we're rolling. Being a dual clutch, it rolls on its own off the line. Power steering wise on this, it's actually pretty light, uh, but the road feel is good. Uh, and it's a very small steering wheel, which some people might not like for you know making tight turns. But honestly, it feels amazing in your hands. It's nice and thin. Uh, we'll try out the paddle shifters and manual as there well. There we go. Sport Plus, drive it how it should be driven. That's exactly right. You know, when you spend a lot of money on a car like this, you should enjoy the features. The click of the paddles, very nice. Um, it doesn't have like a direct click, it's more of like a gradual click. Weird detail, but <laughs> I like it. And we'll try out the acceleration. Here let's, we go. Let's do it. Now one thing I do like, it does not automatically upshift like most Porsches previously used to do, which is kind of cool. Yes. The downshifts are super smooth and silky, and they sound good. I like it. <laughs> Even the first gear downshift is smooth. That's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> but again, a lot of low end torque, so I really don't have to use the gas pedal much to get up to speed. Oh, this car is great. It drives good, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And the brake pedal feel here, it's really smooth. Even here in a little bit of traffic, it's nice and comfortable. Yeah. Which is great. Very quiet. It's a Sunday afternoon, so it's a beautiful day for a drive today. Absolutely. And what's great about this convertible as well is the wind, it's just in your hair, so you get to feel the elements, but you're not being fatigued to death by wind noise. We're going 40 miles an hour now, and most older cars, you'd be miserable and all this buffeting. <laughs> it's nice and quiet, it's a light breeze, not a It's just fantastic. And if you want to test it around the corner, be my guest. Oh, and you can hear that on the turbo, the wastegate. Oh my God. That sounds good, doesn't you it? You wouldn't expect that from a Porsche. I know. But it's fantastic. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it again. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Nice, isn't it? Yo, that's amazing. <laughs> Slow down a little bit to get some acceleration. Here we go. Yeah, that's fantastic. It feels good on the shift, doesn't it? Yeah. Just boom. It's a super smooth direct shift. Mm -hmm. um, it's comfortable. Let's try out the cruise control because that is one feature this car does have. Uh, it's a fancy adaptive cruise control. Yep. We set it. Oh, I did not set it there. I am someone who does like cruise control. Which I can't seem to get it to work. <laughs> well, that's okay. You know, it's a Porsche, you might not use it all the time. Now, as far as blind spots, it is a convertible, so it's not bad. Um, but what's great about the car is even though it's a large car, it doesn't feel overwhelming to drive, even though it's surprisingly big. Mm -hmm. um, the mirror visibility is great. The car feels nice and light, even though it's not. And they really, the way Porsche kind of engineered this car to make it be a good daily driver is amazing. Most definitely. It's a amazing mix between street and also track. You could track this convertible 911 if you wanted to and you would have a tremendous amount of fun. And again, you can go down so many gears. That's just amazing. <laughs> that is, I, just, I can't take the smile off my face. <laughs> you know, with this car, many people thought because it was switching from analog to digital, the driver experience wouldn't quite be there. But let me tell you, it surprisingly is. <laughs> and the digital is more there to help you and give you the benefit of the drive. Yeah. And it's a really surprisingly good combo. I would, I'm, I'm shocked, For honestly. Sure. I did not expect this from a 911 <laughs> that was digital. Yeah. Because when you think of the aspect of what the key values of a 911 are, you think of it being analog in a driver's car, mm -hmm. and yet Porsche made a digital driver's car, which... Yeah. For sure. I don't know, it's just unexpected, but pleasant. And it sounds good. <laughs> it's so you good. like that sound, huh? It's, yeah. so, it's addicting. It's very addicting. I never would have thought a car with twin turbos and a V6 or inline six in this, or no, Porsche, it's a boxer six. Yep. I never thought it'd be so good. It's fantastic. 
And yet, if I want to, I can go back to normal. Yep. And now put it back into automatic. Now it's super chill. And now it's just this comfortable. I don't want call it a luxury car. Yeah. As far as daily driving. Most definitely. Goes. Yeah. I mean, who would have expected that? It's fantastic. <laughs> so overall, first experience in a 992, I, I'm blown away. I really am. This car is just, it's a car that can do everything. And honestly, you understand once you drive one, why they're so popular. So a huge thank you to Porsche Irvine for letting us review this car. Of course. And of course, April 23rd, the big event, you'll get to meet us and help fund my racing for this year and next year. And if you have any questions about Porsches or you can stump us on our Porsche knowledge, we'll even give you a free prize. Yep. So make sure to come to Porsche Irvine April 23rd. We'll see you there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. I'm Mason. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.